Welcome back. Now, Jack and Jill's Foundation has launched their annual fundraising appeal called Up the Hill for Jack and Jill. Very clever. In a bid to raise €100,000 for the charity. We're joined now by John O'Leary, Jack and Jill board member and mm. former Dublin GAA captain and legend. His son, Tom, who has personal experience of the foundation and mum, Catherine O'Leary. Good morning to Good you morning, all. all. Good morning, all. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Tom. <laughs> Isn't he super to join us this morning? Now, before we get into the Jack and Jill uh, campaign, can we talk about the star of the show here this morning, yeah. who is six-year-old <laughs> Tom? <laughs> Catherine, tell us a little bit about Tom, because he was born with a uh, chromosomal yeah. disorder. Yeah, he tell was us born about that. three weeks early. Um, of course, we knew nothing about him. Mm. So it kind of all unfolded within, say, about 12 weeks. We realised that he had rare chromosome disorder. When we say rare, he's very rare. Mm -hmm. um, so no other person has been diagnosed with it. So as John always says, it's a learning curve for us. Every day is a school day. So uh, he had open heart surgery at five months. Um, we thought he'd never walk, he'd never talk, but lo and behold, he's defied the odds. He's at 56 hospital admissions. He's been a really, really sick saw child. saw that, Catherine. And you know, it's upsetting for any parent yeah. to have to take their children to hospital, however minor or major yeah. it is. Um, but 56 times to hospital in his first year. Now that's actually just... in his six. Okay. Right, but... But one of the stays was up to four months. Oh, yeah, yeah. up to four Christmas. months. We're not yeah. talking about overnight. No, we here. took him out his very first Christmas. We collected him Christmas Day. And he so Santi came to him at Christmas Day, his first Christmas. Mm -hmm. And um, we collected him Christmas Day. Of course, ended up back in Stevens's Day. But like all children... They bounce back yeah. mm -hmm. and they're absolutely resilient. It's incredible. Like we've lost him, I don't know how many times. Mm. And yet one day he could be sick as a dog and the next day he's back perked up. So when he was very young, like we never knew we needed mm. the help that we would have needed. Obviously he was tube fed, which was massive for us. We never mm. really saw it before or encountered it. But what I must say is the hospital was brilliant. So he attended Crumlin. Mm. And because I spent so long there, I was nearly trained because the nurses were fantastic and the staff. And you just learn as you go along. Yeah. So although it might have been frightening at the beginning, we got completely used to it. And like he's where he is because we've put the work into it. Other people have, the nurses, like our Jack and Jill hours. But you've got incredible help. Absolutely, you couldn't do it without us. When, There's when no did Jack way. and Jill come into the picture, John? When did, when did they? Sort of some say, so he was born in October, in the hospital in December. So sometime in there, somebody said, like, you know, Jack and Jill might help you. And he had a vague awareness of what Jack and Jill is as a children's charity, but not that, you know, beyond that. Mm -hmm. And um, sort of starting there, we, we, we hooked up with them and, and then we met Sinead Morner, our, our liaison mm -hmm. nurse, and, and, and I sort of went from there. And, Describe what it would do when he's going to come out, and, and the biggest spend of it all was. I mean, there's a couple of things. The first one was uh, sleep, you know, so they give you nursing hours per week, and you can use them depending on what you want to do. But I think sleep was the best thing, so a nurse would come into the house, stay overnight, and get a night's sleep, and that was just yeah. amazing for us at the time. Well, it's and the most basic <clears throat> of needs, isn't yeah, it? But yeah. when, you're, when you're caring for Tom exactly. or any child in this situation, it's 24 hours a day, ah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's quite exhausting, as most parents mm. who are in the situation know. So that, that was a massive help, and then it goes on to sort of. Particularly for catching, like you know, the, the, the advice at the end of a phone, somebody can pick up with someone. Look, he's not well today. He's a bit of a temper. What will they do? And that sort of builds your confidence. And then the nurses coming into the into the house. Mm -hmm. I think the first three or four we used were all nurses from the from the cardiac ward in Crumlin who had seen him in St Teresa's ward at the time. And so yeah. you know, you build up a relationship. And it's still there. There's a connection. Yeah. Yeah. There was a connection. Well, you there, got to and your guardian angel. Ah. Yeah, when I mean, they do, when they come out of sort of nowhere, when you're on that sort of, as I describe it, like a runaway train, because yeah. every every day was worse. He was peg fed, um, you know, he can't take anything orally, he doesn't speak, he had a heart problem, he had poor muscle tone and all that sort of stuff. So you can't was just, see the woods from the trees. You can't see the woods no. from the trees, it's like a train you just can't get off. And Jack and Jill were the guardian angel at the time. And, and with the best will in the world, you know, as I said, the, the usual suspects, grandparents, aunts, yeah. you know, neighbours, oh. you know, we can say, look, I'm going to the supermarket, we look after him, we'll yeah. be back in an hour, you can't do that. Yeah. And it's very hard for them to step in, so it, it can be quite lonely, in particular, I was okay, for, I could go to work. But for catching at home on their own, it was quite lonely and, and you can get into a sense of it's, isolation It's really emotionally quickly. draining mm. as well as oh, physically absolutely. though, isn't it? Yeah, and like, it was the really nice thing as well about Jack and Jill. We met loads of other parents in similar situations. Mm. We've made great friends. Tom himself has friends. They might not speak or pals, anything, but yeah. yeah. Um, but they've learned to, you know, we have a little group and we do things together. We've gone on holidays recently with friends. Lovely. So all that's lovely and without Jack and Jill, we'd never probably have been in that scene either. 
Mm. And uh, oh, the nurses are just fabulous. Like we, you know, even they give up their time on top of their work of to do. look after the kids. Well, they build a bond <clears throat> with yeah. the likes of Tom yeah. and all of a sudden then it's a little yeah. friendship, isn't it? It's yeah. something very special. Yeah. And it's much more than a job that yeah. then. And like, you know, not alone do they send their nurses to come in and mind the kids, but like a lot of it is palliative care where children have died yeah. and they've gone to people's houses yeah. and been with them while their children are passing away. It's just incredible, the work, yeah, that so, they do. So this can campaign, Catherine and John, what you're asking, what you're launching, what you're asking people to do is up the hill. Yeah, we launched a couple of years ago. So this year, Bank of Ireland will come on board and they yeah. put a bit of a bit of weight in behind it, and they're you know helping us Great. with the project. So, 16 euro is the cost of a, of a one hour one hour nursing. So if people register, I think it's 13 hills all around the country. But yeah. you, you can do your own thing anyway and pitch in with a couple of mates. You want to just do something together. So 16 euro to register, and for every 16 euro, Bank of Ireland will, will add an extra four euro. So for every six, for every four customers, there are people that um, you know register. register. They like, there's another and sixteen. You say sixteen euros is the equivalent to one hour. One hour, yeah, and it's an amazing. What I mean, you just don't know the impact. I mean, yeah. it's very hard to get it across, but people people just don't realise. The, it's the, impossible to quantify. Yeah, it, I describe it as it's almost the sixteen euro the gift that keeps giving because yeah, yeah. you can go and do something. At one stage, we had nurses go to your learn back in two thousand eleven. I think it was because yeah. without the nurse, we wouldn't have gone together. Yeah. You've done lots of things. We, we've, um, you know, it was all about a Jack at home doing things with him, bringing him to the zoo. So, yeah. the 16 euros he keeps giving and giving, you don't yeah. realise it. And, and the great thing with Bank of Ireland coming aboard is that's add an extra four euro, then it becomes 20 it. euro, and it's more money into the charity. And um, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, and. And I there's so went, many fam families who are so reliant all around on the country. Yeah. Because yeah. It is a little bit like the GEA. They're, they're, they do have families in every county in Ireland. And when you see the list, you realise that just uh, the reach it has around the country is, is incredible. Speaking of the all Ireland and GEA, it would be <laughs> remiss of us, of course, not to mention that little yoke that's happening tomorrow down in Canada. Yeah, I think yeah. it's tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts? Are you, uh, Confidence going into yeah, it. Yeah, well, look, you know, I'd be confident, and, and but but nervous. I mean, you know, with all respect to Mayo, they, they, they're a great group of players, and they come back again, and, and the resilience that they've done to be back where they were last year. And one. Well, sir, and, you know, I would say statistically they're going to win one eventually. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. just hope it's not tomorrow, you know, against Dublin. Because let's be honest, if they weren't playing Dublin tomorrow, and I've said this during the week, I'd be shouting for them. Yeah, I'd absolutely. Love to win. Yeah, yeah. We would love you, them you, to win, of course. Well, I mean, it's really close. I mean, last year a point uh, in a replay, yeah. black card, own goals, yeah. players, you know, not turning, you know, just mistakes, and 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 so, uh, and, and any day you think you couldn't have written last year yeah, the yeah. way it was. So they're back again, and, and that takes great resilience. I remember in my early, we, we played in three All Ireland's back in '83, '84, '85, and it's incredible just to get yeah. there. And unfortunately, only won one of them. Yeah. But I know what it's like to be on both sides, yeah. and I know it's like even to the '90s, we eventually we won in '95. We were so close and. You know, trying to come back and, and yeah. back at the well again. So I admire them for that, but I, I just wish it wasn't Mayo and, and then you could, you could support. I wish they weren't playing Dublin, but yeah. it'll be, I think it'll be very close. You'll be there? Mm. Absolutely, yeah. Looking forward yeah. to it. Brilliant. And your other son is off playing a match this morning. Yeah, he's playing with the Ravens, Fingal Ravens, and Go absolutely the Ravens. loves he had, it. He, he had a choice. Yeah. And he, <laughs> had a choice. he chose his football. So. And he ditched us. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair play to him. There's a lovely family picture, guys. Thank you. Well, it's for the best look with the camp. Sharing your story. Thank you. coming in. Oh, thanks, yeah. Tom. Love the dogs. <laughs> this is a very Thanks, biased catch yeah, this yeah. morning, it really is. Sorry about that. After the break, we'll be on the catwalk with styles to keep you wrapped up this winter. See you in a few. You should have worn blue too.